Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, uh, you familiar with drinking? Yeah, and questing. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I got some great news for you. On today's show, we have the maker of Drinking Quest, Liquor Before Honor, on Kickstarter right now, Jason Anarchy. Thank you for being on the show again. Hello, thanks for having me. Yes, uh, we're, we are so happy to have you, and we are so excited for Liquor Before Honor because you funded in four hours. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. It uh, Normally, with Kickstarter, you have that, period of time where you're stressing out and going crazy because it's like, ah, am I going to hit my goal? And uh, to have that happen in four hours and get that over with is really nice. So, And uh, also people seem to like the game, which is good. So you never yeah. quite know until you kind of put it out there. Absolutely. It must be a, a, a weight off your shoulders when you actually get to your funding goal so soon and then you just don't have to think too much about it after that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, it'll probably really hit me after it, uh, after the 30 days is up and then it, uh, you know, I'll be in line at the post office or something and it'll be like, whoa, I got funded. And that was a great campaign. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, while, while it's happening, it's just kind of like, OK, yeah, you just got to keep pushing it and uh, kind of doing everything you can to, to drive interest. Um, how are your stretch goals going right now? Uh, stretch goals are good. Yeah, we unlocked the first one yesterday on day one, which is kind of nice. So the last Kickstarter I did for Journey into Draft, uh, there were crazy, crazy stretch goals. Like there was a cloth map added. And uh, like a coin token and all these cool little bells and whistles. So with Liquor Before Honor, it's actually starting at that point this time. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm adding that to the, the main kind of uh, core of the game now. So it's like, where do I go from here with stretch goals? So uh, the first four I had were uh, four new characters and uh, a new special ability for each of those characters. So it's, uh, it's extra cards, it's new artwork and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like we're on track to unlock those. So once we have those... Unlocked. I'm looking at other uh, upgrades and uh, bells and whistles and doohickeys and stuff like that. So, what number does this make in the Drinking Quest Not Trilogy anymore? Uh, so, this is technically the fifth proper entry. You can, you know, start it in any order. You can play any one of them. They're all full games. Um, but yeah, kind of, uh, it started in 2011. The first one was Drinking Quest, the original drinking RPG. Uh, and then there was, uh, the following year was Drinking Quest 2, Yeti Vetter's Yeti Adventure. Uh, the regrettably long title, uh, but it made me laugh, so I, I like it. Um, <laughs> the, the fantastically <laughs> long title. And, uh, and after that was Drinking Quest Three: uh, Nectar of the Gods. So all the heroes get god powers, and they're all really stupid about how they use them. And after you get like a trilogy of things, I'm like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's release like a box set. So it was called uh, Trilogy Edition. So that's been sold out for a while. I've uh, been getting a lot of people asking for that. Because, um, yeah, the original three games are all out of print. Uh, but Trilogy Edition's coming back, so I should have more of those in October. Oh, good. I've got mine right next to me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so there was, uh, yeah, so those haven't been available anywhere, but, uh, they are coming back, and they'll be, uh, you know, a little bit fixed up, and there'll be a few little changes and stuff like that. Uh, there are definitely a few outdated internet meme jokes that, uh, will haunt the game for the rest of its days, but I hope it's kind of like, haha, remember that classic joke? Unless, you know, haha, that is so not current, so... But <laughs> If someone's about to fight the uh, the overly attached Cyclops, I hope they uh, they, they find that funny and not uh, and not judge me for using timely humor. Um, it, it'll be the Duke Nukem of tabletop gaming. Oh, oh you don't oh, want no. that. You don't want that. <laughs> as no. long as it's not the Duke Nukem forever, yeah. Uh, oh, so. <laughs> no. That was 14 but, years that was not well spent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it, uh, but, you know, there's so many jokes in the game. I'm like, okay. And even when I was writing it, I'm like, okay, these won't last. But I'm like, it, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, there, there's so much in the game. It's, it's really dense with humor and content and stuff like that. So I, uh, I don't think anyone who buys it would be disappointed for that reason. And then after that, it was uh, time for the fourth entry. I'm like, okay, should I even do a fourth entry? You know, what's uh, what, what's the goal here? And then with turning to draft, it was basically, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna up the game and I'm gonna do everything bigger and better. And uh, instead of four quests, there's gonna be six, so there's more content. Instead of a, instead of one artist, there's gonna be a team of ten people. So there's gonna be uh, just a ton of art and improve the quality of everything. And then uh, the Kickstarter unlocked, you know, lots of extra components and fun stuff. So it. Uh, Ended up uh, kind of taking the series to the next level, and then maybe uh, you know this is uh, 
uh, within the next trilogy of games right now. And then with Liquor Before Honor, again, it was like, okay, yeah, should I even do another one? And then I was at uh, I was at a con about a year ago in Atlanta, and I had a bit of downtime. And I'm like, all right, well, what could some possible quests be for this one? And then I think I had a list of 10 things. And then I'm like, okay, I just pick the six best ones off of that. And uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, this could be a game. This is really good. So um, so then the quest in the new game, uh, the first quest is, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, like a pirate's kind of theme. So all the heroes are sailing on a ship. I did that with the first game, but I again I wrote out some new ideas. I'm like, okay, there's still more mileage here, and uh, so that's a good way to start it. And then the second quest, uh, they get shipwrecked on an island, so it's kind of like a stranded on a tropical island theme. Mm. So they're uh, you know they're they're fighting like wild boars, and, you know, pineapples falling from trees and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, the third quest is uh, it's all about bees. So the heroes nice. kind of take a stop on their adventure, and they're like trying to harvest delicious honey and stuff like that. And, uh, and they're all a bunch of, you know, really, you know, kind of dumb murder hobos. So it uh, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't go well for them at all. Yeah. And, Is that uh, what happened to the bees? Drinking quest party killed them all. Oh. Yeah. It's uh, Oh, that, that's what's happening. Yeah. We are, we are currently <laughs> killing the population. <laughs> that, uh, it's all your fault. <laughs> our irresponsible questing. Yeah. Maybe uh, they were looking for mead. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, one card where all the heroes are trying to brew mead and it's like a saving throw card yeah and, um yeah it's it's a fun quest i i feel like you needed to have a few kind of standard themes before you get to something really bizarre like bees uh, <laughs> and then the fourth quest i kind of wanted to end it with like a classic kind of dungeon quest so it's uh it's called fizz fangs freezer so fizz fang is the the big bad dragon of the game and uh, it's kind of like an ice dungeon and uh there, there's a lot of like you know beer is cold the dungeon is cold kind of imagery and uh um, so that was a fun way to end it. Then there's two bonus quests. There's a sober up quest where all the heroes are in rehab. And then there's another bonus quest called Bar Trek, um, where you have all the heroes uh, out in space. And uh, oh, another big theme with this game, too, is that all the heroes are now really out of shape from all the drinking. Um, so there's Chuglock, Stacker, and Bartlebutt. Um, they're all really out of shape, except for the annoying sidekick character, who is now in great shape. Because uh, he's super annoying, so they're all in <laughs> they're all in space in like these Star Trek parody uniforms, and uh, they're all super out of shape and uh, in poorly fitting spandex. So that uh, that that quest was uh, there's a lot of good visual comedy there. Oh, I think I noticed that in one of the uh, pieces of artwork on Twitter or on Facebook is that Chuglox has a nice uh, beard belly going there. Oh yeah. He's, uh, he's cultivating mass. So it's, uh, <laughs> and that was one of those things too, where it's like, okay, whenever there's uh, whenever there's someone that's overweight in pop culture, it's always the butt of the joke, but it's like, okay, no, it's uh, in this one, it's just a logical extension of drinking a lot, but all the heroes, you know, still kick ass. And it's still, it's part of the theme of the overall game too. So drinking quest, you know, it's uh, it's this gung ho, really fun drinking adventure. But it finds humor in the the negative aspects of drinking as often as it finds humor in the positive aspects. So it's kind of like you know put both sides out there, and uh, you know the, the game itself doesn't make a judgment or choose to go in a different direction. It's like you know th this is a this is a story kind of thing. So um, I I just like the fact that you have a card in the first quest that's called What's Kraken. Yeah, yeah, uh, Kraken's fun monsters. Yeah, it's, oh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and great for puns. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been playing a lot of Splatoon. I think I kind of stole that joke from some. <laughs> um, yeah, right. I think one of the characters says "What's cracking?" in that way or something, and then yeah. I've been saying that with people when I like meet them and stuff, and nobody gets the joke because I'm not a fish or anything. And uh, so it's, but in my head, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm you like, need okay, context. Good for cracking card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time where I have like a layer in my head that there's no possible way the person can understand it. Or it's like I'll try and like sneak in obscure movie quotes, you know, things like that. It's just I don't know. I hope I'm not the only one that does that. Do, oh, do you no. do you do stuff like that in your games though too? I feel like there's there's a bunch of obscure things and drinking quests. Yeah, yeah. I um I try and have like a big obvious layer, and then I try and have you know kind of more subtle layers and things like that. Uh, and like little nods and things, you know, people who are drinking with their friends and they go out and they're like, oh, I can't believe that joke is in there. You know, I love that bit line from this movie or, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, part of the the, the challenge with anything that's funny is that, uh, you know, it, it often gets old quickly. So if you want to have something that's funny that also lasts, you need a, a lot of jokes that the, the players won't get right away. So they continue finding new things the more they play it. I think one of my favorites is still the uh, Shark Knight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, it's uh, that, that Shark character is great. He keeps coming back in every game anyway. 
and uh, and that was that was probably his best titled card for sure. Um, in the new game, in the pirate quest, uh, in quest one, there's a card called Stowaway, where someone's a stowaway on your ship, and then the image is just that uh, that shark character standing on his fins, uh, dressed like Chug Locks. Uh, and it's like it's like super obvious that you know he's clearly a shark, and uh, but he's uh, he's a stowaway on the ship. His chug locks disguise does not work. Is it, that's kind of like the uh, the story about the D and D character who played a bear, yeah. who like mastered his deception. That's all he put his skills into, and then like faked being a player character the whole time. Incredible. Yeah, Sir, Sir Barrington, I think it was. Yeah, that yeah, one, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah and one that's, guy that's, makes his check and, you're a bear! Oh, so sorry, Sir Barrington. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's great. I like the theme of the new one, uh, and I, I I think that it's uh, it's great. Apparently a lot of people like it because you're like at twice your goal already. Uh, and with 29 days to go, so... Yeah, yeah, just uh, partially through day two right now, and it's... Uh, yeah. No, it's a great feeling, yeah. it's uh, I yeah. want to keep working at it, of course. I don't take uh, you know, too much time to sit there and think about it, but it's... Uh, sure. Yeah, w- once it's all over, I'll have a beer, and I'll, uh, I'll let it sink in, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kickstarter goes through uh, October 12th, uh, so people still have a, an opportunity to get in on it uh, before it closes out, so you definitely should do that. Um, and, uh, they can just go to Kickstarter pretty much and look for it, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, you can search on Kickstarter, uh, you can just go to drinkingquest.com, there's a, there's a big obvious link right when you get to the site there, too, so, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's in all of the, uh, obvious places that you would look for it. Excellent, excellent. Um, and, uh, they can also find you on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, uh, at drinkingquest. See, that makes sense. Do you, I'm sorry, I can't remember, did you have a website specifically for Drinking Quest, or? Oh, yeah, just drinkingquest.com. Well, that's that's easy enough to remember. And uh, and Jason, I know you have to get going, uh, so I won't I won't keep you any longer. But I really uh, thank you for bearing with us, and thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming on. Yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, you go get your assets uh, taken care of. <laughs> we'll do those those assets. Better watch out. Oh yeah, yeah. I always watch my assets myself, so <laughs> it's always good to know. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. On. Okay, so I know what you're gonna say. Boy, that was a fairly short episode, and you would be correct. Um, we had what I'd like to call a computer problem, where Alex's computer froze, and then when it reopened, it needed to do an update, and by the time he was able to actually record, Jason pretty much had to get off and uh, do some, you know, work stuff for the, you know, game that he's doing, so we had to keep it uh, keep it pretty short, but we didn't want to lose our recording time with him, because he's a very busy man, and we're always happy to have him on the show. We are very happy that uh, Liquor Before Honor has done so well. I mean, four hours to hit your goal is pretty incredible. And, I mean, he, he always does well with Kickstarters, but it is always nice to see when he has a new project. And don't forget to check out that Kickstarter. It goes through October 12th. You can still become a backer and uh, put a little money down. You can get yourself a drinking quest. Uh, it's great, especially if you're not as fluent in RPGs. Uh, sort of like a me, you uh, you can get a lot out of it, uh, and uh, and we know that it's going to be funded, so you don't have to worry about the you know will it, will it won't it you know we're not doing a Ross and Rachel thing here we we know that it's happening, uh, although we kind of knew that that was going to happen anyway I suppose regardless uh, you can also find more information about the show at delvecast.com. Uh, which is our website. You can find the show. You can find Delveloper Diaries there. We uh, we occasionally have some good articles there from uh, people that have been on the show, uh, developers that we know, some really interesting things. You can also find uh, my little side project, which I made a page for on the site, Orbital Earthcast uh, with Gap Storm. Uh, we have had some interesting guests in the past, and I started it back up not too long ago. Uh, and we also have currently our one of our recent guests was Jonathan Politis, and he uh, does this thing that's a, a Kickstarter roundup about Kickstarters that are ending soon, 
and he had never really published it. Uh, but when we talked to him, he was like, oh, yeah, may maybe I could do that and I could just list it all and people might get something out of it. So you can find that. Uh, we have it uh, called Still Kicking. <laughs> we thought it was cute. Uh, and uh, you can go there and he will list some interesting projects that are ending soon. Uh, most of them have been fully funded so that you can get an idea of some things that might be worth your time and money. Something to think about. You can also find us online. We are at Dell Podcast. Alex is at EXP Limited. I am at Citanium. So go ahead and check those out, and we will let you know about new things that are happening on the site and with our projects. And boy, it feels like there's even more projects to come, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to get those going so that you can enjoy them as well. With that, uh, we again just want to thank Jason for coming on the show, bearing with us through technical difficulties, and want to congratulate him on all of the fine work that he has done. I want to close out the show by doing a little bit of an homage to something that he often says, and I want to ask that you all please quest responsibly. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>